my paintings are kind of like a history lesson, but I, I go to great pains to make sure that those are right. I'm wanting to make sure that I'm portraying them the way they actually look, so that there, there's enough lies out there without me contributing to more lies by not painting what, what's accurate. Steve grew up here in, in Maysville, in Mason County. His family's been around here for a long time, farming, other things. Uh, he graduated from school here. I know he served in the Army and was stationed in Germany for a while. And so he went to school and took some courses and classes over several years in painting and, and other aspects of art. The way Maysville in this whole area affects my art is because of where it is located in Northeast Kentucky. Really the way I got started with historical paintings of Native Americans and pioneers, being close to an early port uh, that pioneers and Indians used going into Kentucky. And then we had all these buffalo traces. A buffalo trace is a term that's applied to Trace is an, is an old word, uh, 18th century, early 19th century word that settlers used uh, when they were talking about a trail. Trace and trail were often used interchangeably. The buffalo used to come down out of Ohio and ford the river here at, at Maysville, and he just absorbed this whole concept and knowledge of the uh, of Buffalo Trace to the point where it became part of his psyche, I think, or inner feelings. I think the Steve's local ties to the community help influence uh, his subject matter, his love of history. His paintings are educational, letting people know just exactly what times were like back in, in these, these days. I read a lot of narratives, journals. Through reading that narrative, then, I developed the idea for a painting. Steve has been able to bring a deeper awareness of what their lives have consisted of and how meaningful some aspects of those lives are to them. I have found friends and, and really good reenactors that have a, the right persona. And so I'll assemble these live models. I will show them, I want you to stand like this. I want you to, to look this direction or that direction. If I'm fresh from a photo shoot, I can actually just sketch uh, and kind of remember what I want. And so it's through memory and through sketches and through photos, then I assemble uh, the figures on the canvas and I draw it on with pencil. I can then start making adjustments, how, how dark should the figures be, how dark should the foliage be, but I can't make those decisions until the whole painting surface is covered on a large commission piece, a 30 by 40 or a 40 by 60, something like that. Just the painting time will maybe take two months. It's, it's amazing the things that he sees and the things he can create just by a simple brushstroke. The painting's done on stretched linen. Uh, it's usually on a wooden stretcher strip. The brushes are sable. But one of the reasons you don't hardly see any brushstrokes in my paintings is because the, the brushes are soft and they, they lend themselves to the detail. I know when a painting is finished when I think I'm, I'm emotionally drained and I think that my mind says, well, you know, you've said everything that you can say. I think that once I get the emotion that I want the viewer to get, I think that you know, it's time to walk away from it once I sign my name to it. I'm finished. It's like somebody else did it. Steve is very concerned about his work being looked at by other knowledgeable people, be it artists or historians, who might seize on some little thing and then say, 
this isn't right. He does it so that the viewer will not look at it and be distracted by what the viewer thinks is something that's not historically accurate. Some of the items I, I put into paintings are specifically made for a painting. If, if I want a saddle, or if I want a long rifle, or if I want a certain type of powder horn, a lot of these things will be made specifically for a painting. So it's, it's making these accoutrements and stuff to, to help tell the, the story of history. I definitely think that Steve lives his art, and you know, you almost have to. I shoot a flintlock almost every day. And a lot of times when I shoot, I actually shoot in 18th century clothing. I've got one foot in the 18th century and one foot in the 21st century. Steve would fit very well in, in that era. Uh, I think he'd be very comfortable and uh, enjoy every minute of it. A lot of my time when I'm not painting is uh, shooting and just getting out, hiking, thinking uh, about new ideas. Sometimes I'll walk over a creek or a trail or something and think, well, you know, what historic figure actually did this one time? His paintings always lead you to, you know, want a little bit more. You want to know a little bit more of the, the, the history, the story of, of the painting. Steve is thoroughly submerged or immersed in all of these things in his life and when he's painting. I think he has an intense need and feeling deep within himself to express himself in, in this way. It's a historical statement that, that would leave them with an emotional response and that, you know, this is not a hobby for me. You know, this is not something I do in my spare time while I'm working somewhere else, something like that. But this is my life's work. And, you know, hopefully if I live to be 120, there will be a lot more paintings there for people to see.